The topic for this session is, what is hermeneutics? It's a strange word that you perhaps haven't encountered before, and we're going to explore its meaning. Now, hermeneutics, or the hermeneutical process, is in fact as natural as breathing. It is also as, as unconscious as breathing. Constantly we are observing, we are interpreting, we are responding to signals around us of our environment, of other people, of things that we encounter, or events that happen with us. What is important in the hermeneutical process is that we analyze this process on two levels. The first level uh, is how this process works in practice. But then we take a step back, almost looking from behind at ourselves and ask ourselves, what is happening here? How does this process start? How does it proceed? And what are the consequences? And therefore, in this process, we de develop a kind of a double vision uh, that constantly uh, is at play. Now, the origins of the strange word hermeneutics come from the Greek god Hermes. And Hermes was uh, quite a fellow with kind of a um, mixed character. He was the messenger of the gods. So he had the, the job to bring the message of the gods to the people. And in that process, of course, interpretation and translation was needed. So Hermes eventually became the god of the translators and interpreters. Maybe you've seen an old emblem of the post office of a figure with little wings on his feet and a helmet on the head. This is Hermes. And he was also known for the sort of ambiguous tricks that he played while he was a messenger. So uh, the figure of Hermes is always uh, this in-between, this go-between, but also often a message that is ambiguous, that needs interpretation and explanation. Now, in this process of analyzing the hermeneutical process, it is extremely important to pose the right questions to the text that you interpret or the event that you interpret. Ernst Fuchs, one of the famous uh, hermeneutical uh, exegesis of the New Testament, I said, look, it's like how you work with a mouse. If you put a bell in front of the mouse, there will be almost no reaction. But if you put a piece of cheese in front of this mouse, then suddenly he comes to life and there is reaction. So one of the uh, important skills for anybody that pursues hermeneutics is the ability to pose the right question. You can ask any question from a text, a biblical text, for instance. You can ask, what is the date of this? When was it written? Uh, you can ask, in what language is it written? And you'll, give ans you'll get answers. But that would be of little relevance to the question, what is the meaning of the text? So hermeneutics is really pushing the limits of the text to explore what the essence is and what the intention of this text is. So remember that the question that you put to the text will also be the quality of the answer that you will receive. Now, uh, it is almost impossible to summarize the areas where hermeneutics are of practical value in different aspects of life. We, of course, as theologians, are basically interested in the interpretation of a written text, the collection of biblical text, as we have that in the form of the Bible. What is also important to remember is that each of these different fields of application develop their own set of procedures and methods. Let me give you some examples. Uh, the art of tracking a spoor when you're in the wild. Uh, this is not a verbal interpretation. It is a visual interpretation. But you know that 
really experienced trackers can read that spoor uh, with an amazing accuracy when that specific piece of part of game moved across that field, in what direction, what the size were, whether the animal was wounded or not, etc., etc. But there's another form of hermeneutics going on all the time, and that is also a non-verbal uh, form of it, and that is so-called body language, where you interpret the signs of how somebody looks, how he or she acts, and what you can discern from that observation. And maybe in the assignment that you had to complete before the session, you talk to a medical student. And if you see how medical students start their process of diagnosis, they have also their specific way of practicing hermeneutics. They usually proceed by eliminating, <clears throat> eliminating aspects that does not relate to the illness of the patient they are examining. And through this process of elimination, they finally come to the core of the problem and make the diagnosis. If you ask how a jury comes to a decision, uh, you may be shocked to find out that it is not a process where all the evidence is collected, weighed and tested by cross-examination, and then a decision is made. Practical analysis of jury decisions show us that very early in the process, a member of the jury will have and make a decision uh, about the guilt or the non-guilt of the, of the accused. And then in terms of that prior decision or the first decision, they will arrange the evidence as it emerges. So the jury also has a different kind of, of a strategy, a set of strategies when they deal with the interpretation of the evidence in front of them. Now, uh, one of the fascinating fields that we will be talking about more in, in the further sessions is the hermeneutics of biology. Here again, we are dealing with a nonverbal form of communication but it is fascinating to see how one cell is in some way aware of the cell next to them and how in some ways there are signals crossing for those cells to duplicate, to change and to form different organs or organisms. The same applies to the DNA, which is really a hermeneutical string of instructions that are activated in certain circumstances. So this uh, field of biology has become very important, if, even if we study uh, biblical hermeneutics, to understand how the process of communication works in this environment. The meaning of art, uh, how do you interpret a painting or a sculpture or a book of literature has his own way of approaching and evaluating uh, that work of art. Again, another variation of what the hermeneutical process really means. In the field of business, Carl Weick has developed the conscience of sense-making in organizations. He is a pioneer in organizational theory, and he shows how in businesses, often without the complete set of information, uh, business leaders are compelled to make certain decisions and how that process unfolds. Now, as I said, each of these areas practice a form of hermeneutics, often with a different set of methods or procedures, but the old ultimate goal of this whole operation is to make sense of life, make sense, uh, first of all, of data, and uh, make sense of the information that flows from that, make sense of the knowledge that we can distill from that, and hopefully bring us also to an insight that is filled with wisdom. 
So the hermeneutical process is an ongoing living process that is constantly seeking uh, for better understanding, for deeper insights, and for a better approach to reality as such.